In this video, I'm going to dispel all of the myths and misconceptions of Chiari malformations, but not really. I am going to tell you what I know about Chiari malformations and how we treat them and uh, a little bit of uh, the decision-making process as to when surgery is appropriate. Uh, Chiari malformations are even a type of congenital problem. Basically, the back part of the skull is too small and the cerebellum doesn't quite have enough room. And so what can happen is part of the cerebellum can make its way down into the spinal canal where the spinal cord should be. In some patients, the uh, spinal fluid can be blocked by that situation, or the cerebellum can be wedged into the canal there and cause problems such as headaches, uh, double vision, ringing in the ears. Uh, the headaches and the symptoms can be worse with coughing or straining or sneezing or bearing down. Uh, Chiari malformations are actually relatively common and patients will have an MRI sometimes and the radiologist will say, well, this patient has a six millimeter uh, Chiari malformation. Uh, and then the patient is really worried that uh, they may be in a significant medical problem or that their headaches or their vision changes or any other myriad of symptoms could be related to the Chiari malformation. While Chiari malformations can cause symptoms, other things can cause symptoms too. We tend to operate on Chiari malformations in a couple of scenarios. Number one, if the patient has a syrinx, is what it's called, then we tend to operate on the Chiari malformation. So what a syrinx is, is it's a buildup of spinal fluid within the cervical spinal cord and you can just see it on an MRI and we would be able to know if you had a syrinx associated with the Chiari malformation. If you have a Chiari malformation and a syrinx, we tend to recommend surgery for that. Patients with large Chiari malformations and, and significant symptoms, we would recommend surgery in most situations. Pa patients with tonsillar descent down to C2, for example, which the tonsils are the bottom part of the uh, cerebellum. Basically, a significant uh, and, and large Chiari malformation. Then there's the patients that are a little bit of a, a gray area. They have a Chiari malformation, but radiographically, it's not that bad. It's not that large. The, the tonsils are coming down maybe only half a centimeter or somewhere in that neighborhood and um, it doesn't look like it is that significant of a malformation. And yet the symptoms are bad and maybe we don't have another uh, reason for them. We saw a patient in clinic this week for whom that was the case. She came into clinic, she had a lot of symptoms, was uh, significantly disabled and a, a large workup had been done and the only thing that we could find was that there was a Curie malformation. It didn't look that bad, but it was definitely there. We did surgery, she came back to clinic this week and she's doing a lot better. And so there is a, a role for a Chiari decompression surgery after careful consideration if the symptoms are significant and the, even if the radiographic findings are not as se severe as other cases. Uh, the decision to, uh, to do, do a Chiari malformation surgery is one that uh, should be a discussion with your neurosurgeon, uh, definitely to look for a syrinx, uh, to look for the severity of the Chiari malformation and also the severity of the symptoms and if the Chiari malformation is the likely cause of the symptoms. Patients that are well selected for a Chiari malformation surgery, uh, in my experience, tend to have good outcomes from the surgery.